Hey, we're glad you're with us today on The Perspective. I hope you're enjoying the Summer Encore series as we bring to you some of the highlights of the past year. It's been an amazing year. And I want to thank you for participating by praying for us and supporting us. You know, every day as we go through the summer, it is easy to get overwhelmed with life. If the rain is coming down, if the sun's there, we just feel like our spirits are being lifted up. Now, I'm not sure where you're at this week, but this is going to be a fun week. We got some Star Wars stuff that you're going to get intellectual about. We've got Dr. Sam, who's an ethicist, who's going to be with us. We have a former porn performer who turned her life over to Jesus and has experienced incredible healing, and a pastor's daughter who helps people who've been hurt by the church. More than anything else, today I want to share with you the promise for today from Isaiah 41, 13. It says, I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. And may that promise carry you through this week as you watch The Perspective. Well, welcome to The Perspective today. It's going to be a different program, and I'm looking forward to it. Mitch, uh, this, is, this is great. We're, we've had the jackpot. I think we're going to do well today, Mike. We've got right. Roger Christian <laughs> back with us and uh, Dan Angel. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. We got a Star Wars. What is this? Sure. Well, you know, Mike, one of the times I was on the show, I brought in a toy from my childhood. Now, we've actually got... Uh, one of the folks who helps work on the show, their, Alexa, their yeah. son built this. Hey, uh, yeah, brilliant. He so, built it. Like so this, fire it up, fire it up. We got to show, we got to show it off. Hit like this, this button here. This is the here. ultimate Christmas present. I mean, maybe I can auction it off. I don't know if Alexa is listening. And this just makes my lightsaber look kind of sad in comparison. Yeah, it just makes so. it look kind of sad. I'm just, I tried it earlier today and I couldn't turn it off. It kept talking to me and whatever. <laughs> but hey, gentlemen, we are glad that you're with us. We have Roger Christian, uh, Star Wars inventor, director, content creator. We have Dan Angel, uh, multi award winning. Um, producer. So many great shows. Welcome to the program today. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for having us on. Thank you very much. That's I a great lifesaver. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Been... Four guys trying to talk over each other, but we're going to do it. We're going to press through. That's okay. And we just need a director, okay, to give us the cue. But I, I'm sure <laughs> the force will be with us and we can figure it out. <laughs> sure. Maybe that was kind of lame. Let's, uh, let's talk about film and TV content. Um, for the matter, uh, you know, it's a great teacher what happens. We, whether we like it or not, TV and film has influenced uh, the last few generations. Uh, what do you feel about the influence um, that it has made? And are you conscious of that uh, as you create different things? Dan, why don't you start us off? Yeah, I, you know, I well, clearly television and movies and films and series, they all have an effect on people, um, whether it's to make you laugh or cry and, you know, escape. And I think I talked about this before. I, I grew up in movie theaters and I, I love the experience of escaping. Um, but what I love about what we do is, you know, we do it in a way that's telling stories and and watching characters and and just, I think it's important for people to be able to get away from their life for a moment for two hours, three hours, and experience someone else's situation, either in a true story or full escapism, mm. where you feel like you're not even in the world anymore. You just, you know, you're in the theater and you're not even aware of your surroundings. I, I just, I think it's good for, you know, emotionally. I think it's good psychologically. Um, and I love doing it. I, you know, I know Roger loves doing it. Um, I, and I want to say one thing. It's we, I don't do it consciously. I don't sit and say, let's do this great story and try to manipulate feelings and, mm. you know, change people. It's, it's, I think it has to be very organic. And when it is, that's really powerful. Well, Roger, why don't you jump in? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. It, maybe they're similar, maybe a slightly different track. Um, sorry, somebody's trying to talk to me. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's in our DNA from the very first, when you go back, storytelling and coming from India in 9000 BC, stories were told and people listened. And it's it's a connection to the public consciousness that um, is 
and and I've always said this: whatever denomination, whatever faith you are practicing, it's always stories. It all comes from stories, right? From you know, Jesus told stories. You don't lecture people. You don't try to get into their kind of through telling them what to do. You tell stories that they will inherit into their subconscious, and it helps people um, formulate their faith. And and I don't think any of us think consciously about, oh, I'm going to tell this story now, and it's going to be a faith story, and it's going to be this. You tell a story because you want to, but we all have a consciousness about us and enlightenment if you like about what we're doing we're not just doing stuff randomly there's something i came across today which was jj abraham said um, any act of creation is an act of faith and i think that's a really powerful story um statement well roger let me it. just let me jump right in and ask you you know you talked about storytelling how that goes back thousands of years let me ask you with your work on the Star Wars film series, some of the themes about uh, good versus evil, light versus darkness, uh, those are themes that are in a lot of movies, uh, but they play out often in a very literal way in the Star Wars movies. Could you tell us about how some of those themes were developed in, in Star Wars? Yeah, sure. But, see, George had an advantage, which none of the ancients had, that he had a, um, he had a master kind of mentor who had experienced you know, spent his life, um, Joseph Cameron, in in uh, researching mythology, and his book Hero with a Thousand Faces. It says it all, and there's a lot of that that he taught George how to bury keys within a myth that would relate to us growing as human beings, and we all need it, and that's why anything you know, movie theaters are are a fantastic because you have a collective experience and you can go through fear, you can go through um, laughter, crying, emotions, everything together, it's very important. Streaming has taken over, but there's still a kind of, it's not isolated, people were fearful of that. It's still a communal effort. You look at you know any hit TV series, there's millions of people watching it. It's very, very important that stories are continued to be told and it, it helps everybody. And with Star Wars in particular, as you were asking, that George developed that on purpose. And it's really no accident that it's connected to the world and really like no other film has ever done before it. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's all about good triumphing over evil. It's all about compassion. It's all about forgiveness. It's all about belief. And the force is a force that is... Um, that is inherent in all of us, that is the force for good. And it's very important. And Star Wars really, George, really got that right. Well, I, I really appreciate you explaining that. And I want to flip over to Dan for a minute, because, Dan, uh, you're in a slightly different position. But as we look at the life of Jesus and his way of teaching and reaching people, which is a key part of this program, you're a Christian working in Hollywood. So how do you weave all of those things together with the teachings of Jesus that are so foundational to your character, and yet you're also dealing with a worldview uh, that might not always be in agreement or be as specific as you would be in saying that, that Jesus is the ultimate answer to our need. How do you do that as a producer? Well, I think, um, first off, I, you know, I, I started saying things that have to be organic. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm reading a book and I'm moved by it in a way that it's unexplainable or I come up with an idea or a story that is really powerful, I feel like God has a hand in that. Um, and for example, when we did Door to Door, uh, my wife and I are watching 2020 and we're watching Bill Porter, this incredible door to door salesman who has cerebral palsy, walking seven miles a day. And by the end of the 20 minutes, my wife and I are crying. And I said, I have to make this movie. Mm -hmm. And and I think God has a hand in moving me and, and all of us to take action and to do things. And then when you move forward, 
And you actually are fortunate enough, of course, in this case, <laughs> years later, to get the movie made. And it ends up moving millions of people who watch this man. And this is a man who was very Christ-like in his nature. He would knock on doors, he would change lives. He would not pass judgment on anyone. He loved everyone. Um, I didn't consciously say, I have to make this movie because I'm a Christian and I want to tell a certain story in this way. It hit me and I felt this incredible, powerful feeling that I have wow. to make this movie. And it, and it and just I, came to you. It, it just hit you, that feeling. That's great. Well, gentlemen, there's so much more we'd like to push you about. And uh, we've got another interview. And you know I'm sitting here with questions. Folks at home, stay with us. We're going to be right back with Dan Angel and Roger Christian. We're back again with Dan Angel and Roger Christian. And Roger, I want to ask you a question. You know, as we think about the silver screen and the ability it has to influence our realities, talk to us about escapism as it pertains to the consumption of content. You know, we just want to veg out. Do you think that's good, bad? Do you have a thought it's on very, it? It's very important. Um, we all need it. Um, and we all need to get away from our own lives. And that, uh, if you look at this, <laughs> I tell you the, the way I would say it, who escaped? Jesus he escaped into the desert for a long time. That's escapism because it brings you back to yourself. And nowadays our escapism lives with everybody. This doesn't happen much. Everybody's consumed by morning to night, business, earning money, relationships, everything going on, TikTok, all of this. You need to stop. And the best way is through an hour two hours of entertainment whereby you're taken up by a story that affects you you know and relating to dan early on his content comes from a an enlightened consciousness if you like of him every story is not the same what he is relating to our stories and i think that's where the escapism really really affects us and when it's good work doesn't matter if it's horror film doesn't matter if it's a comedy a science fiction or an epic ancient fantasy, if the content is strong and meaningful, it will connect. Right on. Well, Roger, let me jump in and ask you, uh, both you gentlemen, I have a question about some of the work that you've been uh, involved with in the past and how I've uh, watched some of that. So, so Roger, let me just ask you, uh, the Alien movie with Ridley Scott, could you tell me something specific that you worked on in that movie? Um, I did the whole interiors, everything. Um, wow. They built a, a, a wooden skeleton, the designer, who really had not done any movie like that. And of course, I was coming off Star Wars, which is the look that wow. Ridley wanted, but much older and more, yeah. more space truck, as he called it. So wow. I had to, um, I had to do the entire ship interiors of wow. the bridge. That there's a book on uh, the making of it where it says. The bridge was a monster of coordination and, and it was like a, a mammoth task where I had hardly any sleep for a few wow. weeks. So then, Dan, and let that... me just jump in and ask you, uh, and Roger, that's very cool. I loved watching the Alien movies when I was a little older. Uh, but, Dan, you did a lot of work on the Goosebumps TV shows. And, and I watched that when I was growing up. Uh, very scary for me when I was in grade eight. Uh, <laughs> just tell me about what was it like to write those? And uh, if you don't mind sharing, could you tell me, uh, how did your faith influence uh, either the writing or the producing, or uh, was there tension there? Or, or if you would be willing to speak to that, uh, that would be great. But, but tell me about Goosebumps. What was that like? No, absolutely. Happy to speak about it. Um, first of all, uh, R.L. Stein, Bob is fantastic. As you know, the books were huge. And to be given this incredible blessing and opportunity to bring that to life in a TV yeah. series with my partner, Billy Brown, we, we, it was really an honor. But the big honor was that we had this responsibility to create what we called safe scare. Mm -hmm. So we likened it to when kids go on roller coasters. They're like in line and they're nervous and they don't want to go. They don't want to go. They go on the ride. They scream and yell and they get off. And of course, what's the first thing they say? Let's fun. do it again. Yeah, yeah. And so with Goosebumps, we wanted to make, there was no gore, no language, no sex, but we're going to scare you. And we're going to do it in a safe way. And we we definitely, uh, you know, pushed the limits as much as we could. What we didn't realize as we were doing this, we ended up winning all these awards from Parents' Choice mm -hmm. and these different organizations who said, what you're doing is really healthy for kids. It's important for them to be afraid, to go on journeys and realize they're going to be okay. 
And that was wonderful. Wow. Now, we did take some heat. Uh, you know, there were definitely groups who would look at the book covers and say, this is evil because there's monsters. And right, it was like, right. we just didn't engage. We knew our heart was in the right place. We were doing the right thing for families, giving them a safe place to go and have fun. So we felt really good about what we did. Well, then, Dan, let me ask you a follow-up question. Uh, and before I do, I have to mention, I was once working a night shift, and I, I was allowed to fall asleep. <laughs> and when I woke up, scared half to death because on the TV, there's a giant monster screaming. And it, and it was one of the Goosebumps uh, episodes. So, so it got me, but it was safe. Uh, but let me ask you, on a serious note, uh, do you have advice for people when they are trying to think about the sorts of media that they're watching, the sorts of stories that they're allowing into their lives? I know for myself, uh, a challenge or a tension has been, can I enjoy uh, horror movies and still uh, be a Christian? And sometimes the Holy Spirit has said to me, Mitch, you've got to avoid certain movies. So can you give us uh, advice uh, about the sorts of movies and genres that we participate in? Well, I think, you know, for everyone, it's it's different. I mean, there's there's clear lines. I mean, there's some real, you know, hardcore stuff that probably you know, a lot of people should avoid. Um, but I think it depends. We had adults who couldn't handle goosebumps and, and seven-year-olds who could handle it better than the adult. It's just funny how everyone's different, you know, in their makeup and their imaginations. Um, but I think you have to be, uh, you have to kind of gauge yourself. You have to know what, you know, what, I think we all know what affects us. I'll tell you for me personally, um, I cannot do demon possession movies. Um, when I came out of Exorcist, I still haven't recovered from Exorcist. And there's just something about the demon possession movies that really affects me and right. terrifies right. me. So that's my limit, you know, that's, and I think we all have something that might affect us. And when you know it, you just avoid it. <laughs> you know? This is an interesting subject. Uh, Roger, I want to come back to you. I'd love to have your take on the phrase that, uh, for me, it's the, uh, the summation of Star Wars, the force be with you. May the force be with you. How do you understand that? And has your view changed over the last number of years? No, I mean, it, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of all faiths. George put it into one, you know, and it's particularly akin to the qi energy that the Chinese and the, and the East um, say is a part of all of us, and we have to learn how to use it. Um, and that's really what he kind of simmered down into one universal force that is in all of us which is faith it's you know and the jedis rely on it that's how they operate that chosen it's something that um it's not like you don't inherit it it's there inside you and that's something that all of us have mm -hmm. it's universal and he managed to portray that as he was coming through and that we have to develop it ourselves and we have to find it in ourselves. That's faith. Mm. Very interesting. Mitch, wrap us up with our thoughts. Yeah, you know what, gentlemen, honestly, uh, I was looking you guys up and you've both done a lot of things that I've watched and enjoyed. So uh, it, it was a pleasure to talk to you. I hope to have you on the show uh, again sometime. So thanks, guys. And I, I'm really thankful for the, just differentiating. You both bring a different perspective. And I think that's important for us to recognize the tensions that are out there as we journey through this uh, experience called life. And uh, thank you both for your contribution and what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you having us with, being with us again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, stay with us. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be teaching more on the Advent theme of love. Hope and help are so important. And can I just share with you as the viewing audience that we want people to experience the hope that happens when they put their trust in Jesus. I know it transformed my life. It will transform yours if it hasn't already. We also want to help people and through the many interviews and as we teach God's Word, to help people to realize that the Lord is with us, that He is our refuge and strength. So could I ask you to help me give hope to people across our country? Why not go to the link below and donate to support the perspective and together we can give hope and help to our country. Well, welcome back everybody. We've just come out of our time with Dan Angel and Roger Christian. And uh, Mike, I just enjoyed that interview so much. That was pretty cool. Well, 
I just love, they've both worked on films and TV shows that I grew up watching. So, uh, so that was fun for me. And you know, there's one thing that really stuck out to me. And that was when Dan was talking about, uh, I did ask him the question, it was on my mind, but I loved his response when I said, hey, how can we, or is it possible to enjoy something like a horror genre uh, and still maintain a faith in Jesus? Because I do believe, uh, and it says in the Bible, God calls us to watch the sorts of things that we think about and that we focus on. We need to on. think about what goes in and out. Exactly. And so Dan was saying, he says, you know what? We've got to know ourselves. We've got to know our own limits. We've got to listen to the Holy Spirit witnessing to us saying, uh, you can maybe enjoy some movies, uh, some stuff you've got to turn away from, but what's the key there is being in tune to what the Holy Spirit is saying in your life, even about something that might seem simple, like what media to watch, but the Holy Spirit moves, and I just liked that. You know, Mitch, I'm not trying to sound pious, but I remember mm. sitting in a movie once with a buddy, and we got about five minutes into it, and it was like God was saying, you don't need to be here, mm. you need to leave. Yeah. And it was kind of an awkward moment, but I got up and left, and he, when I told my friend why, he said, you know, he said, I've been feeling the same wow. thing. What I also thought was kind of interesting, though, was Roger talking about faith. And I'd love to take it just a little bit farther because Roger talked about faith in a general way and he traced that and uh, just respects so much where he's coming from. Of but in my own journey, I've realized I had to have faith that went further. And it says faith is the substance of things uh, not seen. Mm. But who is our faith in? It's in the risen Christ. And you know what? When I put my faith in Christ, that brings me to the end of the journey. And, and I just want to say to people today that as you're watching, Regardless of what you're watching uh, in media, whether on TV or at the movies, be thinking about where is this taking me in my mind? Am I becoming the person that God wants me to be? Is it building me up or is it taking me down? Is it leaving me in a positive place or in a depressed place? And that needs to be part of the grid that you watch things through. But more than anything else, I want to invite you to be people of faith and discover that the force is more than just something within us, because it's not. It's the presence of Christ living in our lives, and that can be your experience. I'm going to be right back in a moment to teach more on the whole Advent theme of love. Stay with us. One of the most fascinating stories in the Bible took place, it seems, late at night. And when it's late at night, it creates all sorts of questions in our mind revolved around a man named Nicodemus. Some people feel that he was related. To, he could have been the brother of the historian Josephus. He was part of the Sahedrin, a ruling group of 70 people in the times of Jesus. And the list goes on and on with the assumption that he knew the scriptures, he knew the prophecies about the Messiah who would come. But he comes to see Jesus at night. It seems to speak that there was a lot of questions in his mind that he didn't want to admit publicly, that he didn't want his friends to know that he was searching uh, for love, that he was searching for answers, that he was searching for a certain path forward. He comes to Jesus and he asks him a question. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? He asked that question out of Jesus' uh, comment to him in John chapter 3, when Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Oftentimes I've heard people make fun of the people who profess to be born again. They say, oh, are you one of those born again people? Are you one of those Jesus followers? To which I proudly answer, yes, I am. But Nicodemus, the religious leader, he was struggling with all of this. He could tell you a theoretical approach to the love of God, but he hadn't experienced it. He comes to Jesus at night because maybe he just didn't want to be found out. Or maybe he could just no longer sleep. And he said, I've got to get to the root of it. I've got to find the answer. He's not alone and he's not unique because that has been the journey, the story of many people and possibly you. The conclusions we come to vary for each person. Do we choose to accept who Jesus is? Or do we say, no, I'm going to go and find another way. I'm going to try and find a better way. And yet the truth is, is that Jesus is the only way. He actually said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except by me. A strong, audacious claim. And yet Jesus made it. 
What a tragedy for Nicodemus, because I believe that he realized at that moment that he had bet his whole life on a performance-based religion. And you can't get to heaven on your good performance. No, we need an encounter with the living God. And here he was sitting with the one who was the babe in the manger, who would eventually go to the cross to pay the price for his sin, and your sin, and my sin. But we're not told about the decision that he made. The scriptures are somewhat silent. And for me, I have come to the conclusion that it is likely that Nicodemus walked away and said, I'm going to stay to the course that I'm on, the course of religiosity that had left him empty. One thing we need to realize at this Christmas season is that to be spiritually reborn, we need to experience God's love. And maybe today you're full of bitterness or hatred or anger, and all those things of tidings of good news and great joy are far removed from you. I want to invite you today to allow the Holy Spirit, as he's speaking to your heart right now, to be embraced by the love of God. Because the scripture that Jesus gave to Nicodemus was this, that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Saying, how do I have eternal life? Well, as I've been mentioning all this month, we want to give to you this little book, Why Christmas? It'll help you in your journey. Why don't you write to me? We'll send it to you and it'll help you discover the love that God has for you to experience at this Christmas time. Thanks for watching. You've been enjoying the programs this week. You know, whether it's been our Star Wars feature or talking to Dr. Sam, our ethicist, doesn't really matter who we've been speaking to. At some point, the questions come back to our mortality and how we process life. And that's why all this week, I want to offer once again John Burke's amazing book, Imagine Heaven. You know, it says one out of 25 Americans have had a near-death experience, and I'm sure that is the same for Canadians. It's a book that talks about what people have experienced before they've been brought back to life here on earth. It takes away the fear of death and the wondering what's going to happen because as he speaks and interviews to over a thousand people, he lines it up with scripture and their experiences are exactly what the scriptures have talked about. Get a copy of Imagine Heaven. And you know, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, we have another book that's called Just Start. It talks about how to have that relationship with Jesus so that when life is over, you don't have to fear where you're going to spend eternity. Live with that assurance. That's why I want to invite you to write to us at the perspective for these books, Imagine Heaven and Just Start. And why not just start today by praying with me to put Christ in the center of your life? And say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to be my leader and Lord, to be my Savior today. He always hears that prayer. Write to me at theperspective.tv.